how to navigate the dangerous water of life. Any sheep can be a mind sweeper once. In a hostile world, few things are as dangerous as or as terrifying as an explosive mine. Landmines are buried in seemingly harmless areas, killing and maiming decades after being planted. Our seas are full of them. One mine can take a huge ship, almost as devastating. The fear of mines can deprive a ship of freedom of movement, paralyzing it in fear of inevitable explosion. A plum of water is shuddering throughout the selection of the vessel, a chaotic descent into the depths. Yes, one mine floating beneath the surface can sink a ship and one false belief lurking beneath your thoughts can sink your whole life. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish our movements and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take a captive uh, every true to make it uh, obedient to Christ. Without even knowing it, many of us are sailing through dangerous waters. Strongholds, arguments, pre uh, pretensions have been planted to our paths. These are the beliefs behind our beliefs, the assumptions behind our assumptions, and in many cases, they are built on lies from the enemy intent on blowing us to bits. As part of its anti-mind warfare, the United States Navy flies the largest helicopter in the free world, the MH-53. MH stands for Mine Sweeping Helicopter. With three engines of over 5,000 horsepower each, it can lift a railroad car, but its mission is to fly above dangerous waters, pulling an extensive apparatus that defines and explodes mines. Just as the Navy uses mine sweeper, the Christian today needs to mine the sweeper. Do you know what dangerous lurk deep in your mind? Do you know what uh, to get rid of them? Lord, I ask that you would search my heart and show me my ways. Sweep my mind, Lord. Expose the lies and expectations that lie beneath the true surface of my thoughts and actions so that I might lie freely and boldly in your truth. Amen. How you can stay on the right path? Question, how many Unitarian Universalists does it take to change a light bulb? And answer, as a Unitarian Universalist, you choose not to make a statement either in favor of or against the need for a light bulb. However, if in your own journey you have found that light bulbs work for you, that is wonderful. Present it next month to our annual light bulb Sunday service in which we will explore a number of light bulb traditions including incandescent, fluorescent, three-way, long life and tinted all of which are equally valid paths to luminescence from the website of First Unitarian Church. Like mines floating on a bay, ready to sink a ship, several modern philosophies lurk underneath our thoughts, waiting to take us down. One of the dominant mottos of our generation goes like this, it doesn't matter what you believe, as long as you believe it's generally. 
that's called universalism, the dream that everyone will be safe regardless of the choices and decisions they make. Universalists cling to the truth about God being a loving God, but they ignore or are ignorant of the fact that He is also righteous and holy. When the Son of Man comes in the, His glory and all the angels meet Him, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him, and He will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on His left. Then He will say to those on His left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. I wish I could believe that all roads lead to God, but it's just not true. And universalist is a misjudged dream. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. If someone accepts his free gift of forgiveness, they are given a, a safe passage into the very presence of God in the future and are promised the very presence of the Holy Spirit within their spirit today. Only eternity will reveal how amazing that offer truly is. And for today, that's certainly a message worth sharing with others. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are the way and the truth and the life. Give me great joy in that truth and use me in any way that you see fit to share that great news with those around me who are wishfully hoping in a misjudged philosophy of universalism. Amen. Jesus has overcome the world. You have victory through Jesus. Let God's promise shine in your problems. Kari Ten Boom said that powerful quote after having experienced the honors of Nazi concentration camps. Can you imagine having the same level of trust? What make it possible? Kari's belief was rooted in something more than the hope that God would simply take away her problems. She experienced the true promises of God in the midst of her problems. Abraham and Sarah exhibited that same kind of trust and belief. I have overcome the world. The let God's promises shine on your problems. Yet Abraham did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Abraham clearly believed God was capable to keeping his promises, no matter how little sense God's way made to him. We too can be fully convinced that God has the power to do what he says he will do. Do you know and believe the promises of God? Jesus promises that we can take courage in times of trouble in this world because he had overcome the world. Our Lord promises that He is strong in our weakness. God promises that He will walk with us every step of the way, even when we walk toward shadows and death. And those are just a few of God's many promises to us. At times, His promises may seem to run contrary to our wishes, that we wouldn't have trouble, that we wouldn't get sick or die, that we wouldn't feel weak, but the nature of God's promises are deeper than our wishes and we experience the depth of power of them when we are willing to let the light of the truth shine on our problems. As you need God's word, may He fill your heart and mind with the incredible promises of the scripture, convincing that, uh, you of the abundant life that's your in Christ.
putting your hope in the right place. The founders of a new colony, whatever utopia of human virtue and happiness they might originally re- project, have invariably recognized it. Among their earliest practical necessities to allow uh, to allow the um, uh, portion of the virgin soil as a cemetery and another portion as the site of a prison. Applied technology and exploding amounts of information are giving rise to incredible human accomplishments in this world. There is no question that we are experiencing that our ancestors couldn't even have dreamed possible. But it is resulting in an improvement in the overall human condition. Given enough time, could we possibly create our own utopia? That's the hope of utopia is that things will get better and better with time until we have heaven on earth. The problem is that utopianism uh, is a misplaced optimism and if we buy into it, it will take us out just like a ship taken out by a torpedo with all our accomplishments. We have yet to come up with our own situation to the sinful and selfish soul of man. Our world will not end in paradise. Our accomplishments are really just fueling our demise. In fact, everyone who wants to live a goodly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil doers and imposters will go from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue in what you have. Learn and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Things are going from bad to worse and this period of history will end in the faith and righteous judgment of Christ who will once and for all set things uh, right. That's not what many people hope for, but it's actually very feeling, uh, free, uh, freeing to uh, put our hope and trust in the right place. Jesus, I place my ultimate hope in you today. Show me where I am trusted in things that this world, things that cannot and will not save me rather than scientists, doctors, politicians, or everything else. I transfer my trust to you in all things. I worship you as my rock and my redeemer. Amen. The next three days are crucial. In a world that's telling people there is no reason for hope, we can tell them that despite current circumstances, Jesus has come to give them abundant life. Telling the truth is equipped to reach a global audience at this critical time through one air and online Bible teaching. God made us for such a time as this to share his promise of an abundant life of hope and peace no matter what happening in the world. And today you can help share those promises with the mere, more people around the world. You will help broadcast the promises of God through across the world. You will help engage the record number of people who are visiting, telling the truth online, looking for something to put their faith in and someone they can trust. You will help younger generations engaged in biblical truth through, uh, through platforms that share telling the truth, the teaching, like social media, the Bible app, and the pray.com app. Does what works really work? The end may just
justified it means as long as long as there is something that justifies the end there probably isn't a single one of us who hasn't at one time told someone this it doesn't matter if you win or lose it's how you play the game of course we only say that to losers don't we in our culture the win means everything our motto is it if it feels good do it we should always pursue the greatest happiness for the greatest number of people sounds like political democracy doesn't it like trotsky and the early communists this quickly eroded into the end justifying the means it's called utilitarianism and made a mistaken philosophy that said it doesn't matter what's right it only matters what works the problem of course is that trying to find happiness in circumstances is contrary to finding joy in christ when we pursue pleasure and happiness instead of god rather than pursuing pleasure pleasure and joy in god we immediately make idols out of the things we uh, hope will give us life those idols just can't stand on their own and jesus won't stand for them when he returns the bible presents an eternity entirely different paradigm therefore i urge you brothers and sisters in view of god's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is his good pleasing and perfect will for by the grace given me i say to every one of you do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith god has distributed to each of you utilitarianism is one of the philosophical minds that is ready to explode and take down your ship if you head into these waters only destructions and pain await you and those around you thank god that through his scriptures he has told us the truth he has provided a new and loving way to anyone who chooses as a, as a safe course spirit i believe that you are in me and ready to live through me i refuse to live by what uh, works rather than by you i don't want to be conform conform to the world i present myself to god as an instrument of worship instead a living sacrifice by his grace through faith amen life full speed ahead damn the torpedoes full speed ahead universalism topianism utilitarianism with so many is floating around waiting to blow up our ship is it safe to go anyway how do we navigate through such a dangerous waters in the heart of the civil war mobile bay was heavily mined at the time the traded naval mines were called to torpedoes admiral faragut commanded his fleet to change to charge the bay when one of his ship was hit other ships began to retreat from the battle damn the torpedoes faragut shouted four bells captain triton go ahead joe it full speed 
Yes, destructive philosophies are all around us. We have bought into some of those philosophies whether we know it or not. But do we just sit around and do nothing? No. The best thing is to move forward rather than retreat in fear. In my opinion, it is far better to live for the truth than it is to try to hide from the lies. With the Holy Spirit in us and with the Word of God in front of us, the lies can be exposed before they cause damage, but a love wasted covering in fear, that's just a wasted life. God has given us such a simple and powerful instruction for living in grace and freedom. In response to the lies, we are to aggressively live in truth, for truth. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn and for my uh, transgression the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul. He has showed you, O oh man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you, to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Yes, we need to adhere to the mind speed per principle by taking every thought captive. Then it's time to just get on with it, full speed ahead. Heavenly Father, I thank you again for the truth of your word. I thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit within me. I thank you that I have been crucified with Christ and he now lives in me. I ask that you continue to reveal the lies that lurk beneath the surface of my thoughts. You have shown me that what is good and what is required, I submit to the power of Holy Spirit in me right now and I ask that he would live through me the kind of life that you have called me today. Amen. Are you ready for his return? There is nothing like an unexpected guest to get everyone cleaning up the mess. On Saturday afternoon where Billy Graham was holding a uh, crusade in uh, Milk uh, we got a uh, call from one of his staffers. Would it be possible for Dr. Graham to retreat uh, to your home for a few hours? My mother said, of course, what, the, what day would he like to come? How about in two hours? Panic, mom hung up the phone and assembled all the children. We picked up and primed every inch of the home. She sent us upstairs to shower and dress appropriately. When the great preacher arrived, we gathered in the living room where my mom sat next to him. A few minutes later, the uh, doorbell rang. My mom uh, popped up to answer it, not realizing that her leg had fallen asleep. Her leg gave way right onto the lap of Billy Graham. In the front side preparation, this surprise guest literally had us falling all over him. It has become a family legend, but here's the point. Be ready. Therefore, keep watch because you do know, not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not accept him. Jesus is coming back physically and it could be really soon. How then should we live in major frenzy to get our house cleaned up if we aren't careful? The ominous reality of the second coming of Christ could frighten us out of peace into a self-propelled panic. 
so hard there should be lead. Paul puts it, it puts it in full perspective. May your Holy Spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. The truth is that Christ is already here, not physically yet, but his spirit lives in us. Being aware of that and living in him is the secret to being ready for the day he comes back to rule and reign physically. Jesus, thank you that in you I will be found blameless when you return. Give me a consistent perspective that looks to that day more so than today. Amen. God promises, promises you can trust. Even when intentions are pure and efforts are tireless, promises are hard to keep. But there is someone you can put your faith in. The Bible helps you look to Jesus, the one is whose, in whose promises you can find certainly security and hope for tomorrow. Get your God promises. When the world tells you there is no reason for hope, we want to remind you that Jesus has come to give you abundant life. And you have his word on that. Lean into the promises of God with Bible teaching. You will find reassurance that God is faithful and he promises all those who put their faith in Christ and about that life of peace and hope. Amen. We hope you will find rest and calm in the hope that only Jesus can offer. Amen.